Welcome to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. Every single time we film, I get more and more excited. And I tell you, today, with my beautiful co-host, Ornella Siakam. Ornella, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Mr. Byrne. How are you? Good. This is, has to be special for you today. It, it kind of is. It kind of is. No, it really is. It really is. I know, <laughs> I know you're excited because you're here, not only a co-host, but you're also here as a participant. Definitely. So why don't you introduce two of your good friends to us? Um, so today, I brought with me my two friends, Madeline Sherwood and Taryn Jones. <laughs> we are a part of the YBC program at Princeton High School. Okay, so YBC. Everybody watching right now is thinking, what is YBC? Madeline, what's YBC? YBC is, stands for Youth Built Change. It's a partnership with the University of Cincinnati and Princeton High School, as well as a more rural setting school, Manchester High School. Um, it's creating community researchers in our youth. Excellent. Taryn, community researchers. So when this program started, it started actually last year for you. Yeah, it did. So what'd you think about it? Like, did you know anything about research at that point or what were you thinking? So last year we really thought researchers were someone who's always in a lab or someone's always on a computer. And we didn't really get to see like how we can actually do surveys and ask our peers and how we can conduct our own research to find our own our own research to figure out our own questions. And so it was a very interesting experience to see how we could, our research is making change in our community. Yeah, so we're going to really unpack this for a little bit. Um, so you've built change. You're like researchers in labs, and then you're like, no, they're not. They can be everywhere. But the biggest thing to me is, that, is the youth, the student voice, and change. So Ornella, when you first got involved in this, what were you thinking about what you were going to be able to do? So I remember the pitch sophomore year where um, we were told that the, our participation in the program would allow us to actually con conduct some change that would happen in the community. So I was really excited about the part where I knew that I was going to be able to work with students that like were the same age as me to kind of create some type of change. So that was the really the most exciting part. Yeah. So you know, one of the things that I remember when I was a principal, we used to survey kids, and we would say, "What do you want to see change?" And you know what they'd say every single time: longer lunch. And if I was elementary or middle school, more recess, no homework, right? So sometimes when people think about change, that's really, unfortunately, that's what kids think about. But that's not you three and your other friends and colleagues that are in this class. So let's kind of unpack this. So youth build change. So what are you doing? Taryn, what are you actually doing? So in class, we're trying to find a way to make a direct impact to our community. So we looked inside of our community and see how some, some of our students have been ex had exposure to um, drugs and other substance abuse, and we want to figure out ways to help them to understand the, mis the misconceptions and the true effects of them. So we're trying to look within ourselves and with our peers, see what's the best way they can be receptive and what's going to really get their attention. Yeah. Excellent. So what was it last week? When they had to pre which, by the way, thank you for lunch. I didn't realize you guys bought lunch. That was awesome. Uh, was also through the youth building. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so, Madeline, during that presentation, I know you have great support from your teachers, which I definitely want you to talk about. The administration was there, led by Mr. Balmer, high school principal, but many other administrators were there. And it really was very impactful. So you want to talk a little bit about what you're trying to do this summer? So we are trying to implement a program into the summer school at the middle school and high school with approximately a target age of 7th through 10th graders because we believe that that is about the right age. It's not too early where the students will still be able to understand what we're trying to teach them, but it's not too late once they've already had their experiences that set their mindset for their future. Excellent. So, you know, one of the things that it's always interesting with research, is that people don't want to hear about I think, <laughs> it's about I know. Here's the data. So the data that you have suggests that seventh through 10th grade is a good target group. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what's it gonna look like, this, this class? So we're still trying to figure out all the logistics of it, but so far we know that we're, trying, we're going to implement it in the middle school and the high school program as a summer school um, kind of thing. And us three are going to be interchanging throughout the summer to kind of come in and facilitate in ways that we can help, along with the help of a teacher that we are. We just found out yesterday that we found a teacher that's going to um, teach the class for us. 
So we'll be able to teach it at the middle school for an hour and then teach it at the high school for an hour. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I know, Taryn, I remember when you were talking about it's summer after <laughs> senior year, yeah. <laughs> and you were like, Mr. Burton, we're not going to have a lot of time. Yeah. And you, I gave you a little push. Mm -hmm. said, you guys did all this work. You should be there. Mm -hmm. Right. So talk a little bit about the support that you've had through this program by your teachers. And let's mention them by name. So Ms. Hackman and Ms. Lampy, they've really been a great support system of trying to get us, just to lead us in the right direction. Because although, well, me and Madeline were in the same group last year, and we had a lot of challenges and adversities to get through because some teachers like weren't open to helping us conduct our research. So they've really been a good, consistent, you know, support system to help us really guide, sure. <laughs> really guide us and to like know, well, if we can't do it this way, we can target this way or we can get another, we can get somebody else to help us out. We can look for outside of the box resources to help us conduct our research. Now, one of the the, one of the uh, announcements I know you guys hear every day is our mission statement, empowering each student for college, career, and life success. You guys are probably like, I don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you'll, you'll remember it. And a quick little story. I, walked, uh, I was walking around one day with a, a State Board of Education board member, State of Ohio Board of Education member. And we walked into acapella. And I remember it, it was talking about uh, making, you know, saying I'm sorry that you can't participate in the, in the uh, Princeton's Got Talent, but we're going to do two music videos, which, by the way, I showed people yesterday. I, lo <laughs> I love those. They're awesome. And I remember talking about the mission statement, and, like, as soon as I started, like, everybody knew the mission statement, which was really, really important. So, Madeline, talk about how you feel empowered through Youth Build, this collaborative that, that we started with uh, University of Cincinnati. How do you feel empowered? I feel empowered because of the opportunities that it has opened up and just getting hands-on experience within my community and feeling like I'm giving back. Um, I was also a part of those two music videos. So I I, yeah, I'm very thankful for all the opportunities that those have opened up. So now I know that people have been following your journey. So can you tell us a little bit about the future? Um, so uh, I actually just did commit to the Ohio State University, which is where I'll be heading next year. Um, and I have chosen to major in public health on a pre-med track. So that really was part of your experience with the Youth Build Change. Yeah, that's where I really like solidified my decision that I wanted to major in public health. And that's really part of what we try to do at Princeton. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Ohio State, though, is pretty expensive. Yeah. So I don't want to get in your personal finances, <laughs> but... You have some news you want to announce? Um, so, yes, I actually did receive a full ride to The Ohio State University. So that's really, like, really, really exciting to, you know, know that that's taken care of. Yeah, well, congratulations. I know tons of hard work, so warranted. Awesome. Thank you awesome. so much. All right, Taryn. I know that I gave you a little bit of hard time, <laughs> maybe a lot of hard time, by making sure that you're going to be there. I know there's yeah. a lot going on. How did you feel empowered with the youth bill change in general? And why don't you talk a little bit about your future? So I felt empowered because I, you could see the direct impact you were making in our community. And I just felt like it made me feel good. Like, oh, I'm actually doing something. I'm actually putting an effort into doing something good. And it's going to make a, a lasting effect in our community. And then I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Cincinnati. And so I'll be going there on a pre-physical therapy track. Okay, you, you, you made mention of the scholarship, though. I never heard it before. So it's the Darwin T. Turner Scholarship, if I'm not mistaken, and it covers my tuition for the next four years. That is awesome. Well, congratulations Thank you. there. And, Madeline, I know we, we were talking earlier, right before we came back on air, mm -hmm. about business mm -hmm. at UC. They have a legendary business program, the Lindler mm -hmm. School of Business. Actually, mm -hmm. my son's in that. He'll be going in his junior year. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he has to work. I mean, that's, that's tough. Now, thankfully, he's doing great there. He's got a four point in the program. You know, a little brag <laughs> with that or whatever. But, man, he's such a, such a bright student and so talented. I know a cappella and all that as well. Are you going to try to do anything outside of, of uh, being that student mm -hmm. at UC? I will. I, I plan to join choir and as many. Uh, extracurriculars that I can while I'm at UC as well as um, making a 
a minor in environmental science so that after oh, okay. after school I can focus in sustainability and business. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's tremendous. And so we know that obviously you guys love the answers about feeling empowered and especially the direct impact. That's one of the things we really try very hard at Princeton to do is make sure that we listen to kids, that the voice is authentic. And, you know, and, and it's so funny because literally in this room, what, about two and a half years ago, Ornella was being interviewed here for This is Princeton. And this is how it's, it's so funny that we're back here now talking about youth built change and the great work that you guys have done. So you guys did a presentation, now summer school. Do you feel that, and anybody can answer this, do you feel that uh, like all the work is coming together now? Absolutely. I feel like this year, we, last year we did more of our foundational studies and really like put a lot of work together. This year we're really taking an action step. We're really seeing that next year, or, or next year, next summer, we'll be able to teach the class that we've been working hard to find what's gonna work What's gonna what's gonna stay within their minds? What they're gonna have 20 years from now, and how to really change our community. And I do think that it's really important with the push that you did give us that we do see like what happens in the summer because it would be no point to do all this work for the past two years and not actually see like the fruits of your like your your labor. So that is exciting that we're gonna be able to participate and see what how the students react to our our program. Malin, any closing words? Go bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's perfect. And as always, yeah, we always say that. So, hey, I uh, certainly appreciate you guys joining us. I know there's a lot going on, especially senior year. I've heard that. <laughs> so senior year, lots going on. And uh, you guys do know that we're going to, graduation's going to be in person unless something big changes. But right now, we're planning that prom and all that. So I know you guys are so excited. <laughs> And we're thrilled to be able to uh, do that. I know the high school administration, again, led by Mr. Ballmer, they do such a great job and they care so immensely as the teachers do and all that. And you mentioned two unbelievable teachers that are helping and supporting you guys along the way. But we're really, really proud of what you guys have done and look forward to hearing many positive things in the future. All right, we'll be right back. The people of Princeton. On air or online, this is media for your community. This is ICRC TV. Welcome back to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. We are here with Ana Martinez. Ana, thanks so much for joining us. Um, and a new, not a new employee to Princeton, but new role. And we're really excited about what your, what your role is going to be and what you're going to do. So we wanted to talk a little bit about the role itself, have everybody meet you. And so do you want to introduce yourself a little bit to everybody out there in TV land? Sure. My name is Anna Martinez, and I have been in Princeton for almost 11 years. And um, I, initially, uh, I initially started as a paraprofessional and in an elementary building. And for the last four years, I have been here in the um, Welcome Center and Administration Center. Uh, now in the role as a parent liaison, bilingual parent liaison, um, and yeah. <laughs> so, so one of the things that we really want to make sure that we do here, we talk about equity all the time, we talk about inclusiveness, we talk about bringing everybody together, and that's what we do, and this position is such a big position for us. So going out there, do you want to talk about a recent meeting you've, you had where you're, you kind of connected some people with GE Aviation? Um, yes, we are trying to bring more um, representation of our students to the district. And uh, recently we had a meeting with uh, Maribel Cortez and the GE uh, representative. Um, and we are talking about um, good opportunities for the district and the students. Yeah, it's so, it's so important. And I know, Ornella, you know, we've talked so many times before just about making sure there's representation. And this is something, quite frankly, honestly, that's long overdue. And I remember talking to you almost a, over a year ago, and I said, we have something for you. And it took a little bit of time, but here we are now. And now the bilingual, apparently, community liaison. So you're out there. And once, once we open up and we can get more places, 
Do you want to talk about maybe some programming at some places that we'll do? So you and I will we'll go out and we'll talk to community members? Um, we are uh, planning on going out in the community and have uh, parent information meetings. Um, we will talk about the things that are happening in the district and the things that we are planning for the future and um, how we will also inform the parents and how they can support uh, what we are doing and how they can support the students and how they bec can become part of their um, school and the kids learning. You know, go ahead, Arnell. Um, so I was going to ask, um, being a student at Princeton, I know that we do have a pretty large um, Hispanic community and bilingual community. So with the plans that you are doing, what do you um, expect it to do for the students? Because you know, at, the end, at the end of the day, everything is going to be for the students. So how do you expect it to you know, help the students? Um, sometimes the students need assistance with uh, communicating uh, their needs. And uh, that's when I come in and I assist them, uh, connecting them with the right person that will assist them. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, we talked so much about, the, in the first segment, we talked about how students felt empowered. And you were listening, so you heard what the students say. But it's also, you know, when we talk about our mission statement, is empowering each student for college, career, and life success. But it's empowering each person, really. So you started as a para, and now you're in this big position. How do you feel empowered at Princeton? Um, Princeton has given me the great opportunity of um, moving up to the position where I feel like I can support, be support better the district and the community. Um, in this position, I feel like I'm empowered to make a change by assisting the parents and the students to feel um, empowered and welcome in the buildings and also I'm hoping to bridge the gap from, uh, that the parents have, that they can um, understand that the school, that they are also part of the student's um, education and learning and growth. And I want the parents to be more, uh, feel more welcome and feel like they can um, participate and that that's their uh, right to do. So I know you talked about how we'll be going out, talking, doing community presentations and so forth. Are there any other thoughts that you have that you wanted to let people know to, to really encourage more parents to get involved? Um, whether than uh, creating workshops for the parents, um, uh, helping them um, bring in um, programs and topics of their interest, uh, things that they might need to know in order to uh, be more uh, actively participating in the schools and the kids' um, education. Um, and right now, we are working in uh, assisting the parents on um, registering the kids in their new system that we implemented, the online registration final forms. Mm -hmm. And we are going to go out and um, assist the parents uh, from creating email accounts and um, assisting them on creating their final forms accounts so they can enroll the kids and update their information if there is any changes. And also, they will need to go online for next school year, uh, we are now accepting those enrollments that the parents, uh, we are asking the parents to go online and create their accounts and update the forms and enrollments. So we are also working on going out um, and doing that. And see, that's personal touch that I'm so proud to say. I had nothing to do with that. You guys are coming up with great ideas and you're implementing them and that personal touch is critical. We know that when people feel comfortable, they're going to show at school more. And that's what we want. But if people don't feel comfortable coming at school, that's okay. We're going to find you, right? We'll go out there. And I just wanted to just give you a minute if you wanted to speak specifically uh, to, to the community about anything that you want to say, both in, in English or in Spanish. Feel free to do that and kind of just leave us with a message. Um, I would like to invite the parents to, um, to call, reach out if they have any question or concern or if they need assistance. Um, now that we are working on final forms and we are trying to help as many people as we can to become comfortable and um, confident, so because that's the process they will be doing from now on, uh, we would like to uh, have the parents to reach out to um, if they need assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we are here to help them. 
Um, estamos aquí para ayudarles. Este, quiero pedirle a todos los padres que si necesitan ayuda con la registración de Final Forms, este, si necesitan ayuda con uh, tecnología, nosotros vamos a estar aquí disponibles para ustedes. Pueden llamarnos um, y vamos a asistirle en lo que uh, no sea posible. And so the final forms are critical because that's how all the information, so much information is going to come to parents. So thank you so much for joining us. You did an excellent job. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> and uh, out there in the community, you're going to see Anna. She's going to be out there uh, having community meetings, programming, parent workshops. And we're so very excited that you are here and the great work and that you feel empowered and, and look where you came in and the great programming you had a while ago, right? When you were at Heritage Hill, you did unbelievable programming there. And so we were able to capitalize that and going to be able to put it all over the district. Yes, I'm excited and looking forward to that. Thank you. We'll be right back with you. Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. Welcome to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. Here today, Hall of Fame students in a Hall of Fame school. As always, go Vikes! Hello everyone and welcome to ICRC TV Sports. That's going to be a ball game. Princeton takes the match. Shot, goal! Brings a tackle at the 10 yard line. Touchdown Vikings! Welcome back to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. We are here, this is one of the, I, we actually should have entitled this, this whole program Student and Staff Voice. Because we're here today with two students. There are other students, though, that couldn't be here today. But other students that are going to represent Princeton in what's called the See Us Summit. Also, not only with Amy and, and Sneam, but also Dr. Mary Phillips, who's been in the district for several years. She's associate superintendent. Many of you probably already know who she is. She's a legend in her own time. <laughs> Dr. Phillips, thanks so much for joining us. You want to talk a little bit about See Us Summit? I, I sure would. I'm excited about the, the summit. It is a national student-led uh, social justice uh, summit. Uh, we have about nine districts that are participating in the summit. And uh, basically, it's an opportunity for students to really advocate for change. Um, they have created lots of uh, different um, uh, workshops. Um, come up with specific topics, and they want to share this information with teachers and students. Um, they want to let them know that um, there is racism still existing in our school systems, and they are going to be giving recommendations on what stu students and students, can, I mean, excuse staff can do to uh, move forward with making some change. You know, a, a lot of a lot of times people don't even know. And they say things they think may be funny, mm -hmm. or the staff may say things that they, maybe they're being a little bit sarcastic or whatever, and it happens all over the country. And this program is going to really kind of call out some things. Mm -hmm. And thus far, we have well over 300 people that have already signed up, but they think it's going to be over, well over 1,000. Mm -hmm. This could be huge all over the place. So, Amy, how do you feel about being part of something to really help lead to change? Well, I'm very excited. First off, thank you for having me. And I've always wanted to make a change in school systems because yet there's still racism going on and bullying. And I don't like that, but anytime I used to say something, nobody would listen. But now I can say something and people would actually listen and actually, you know, do as like is requested. Yeah. So, Amy, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself too? So, well, my name is Amy Sal. I'm an 11th grader at Princeton High School, and I graduate next year. I'm the first in my family to graduate, and um, I play softball for Princeton. We actually have a game today. <laughs> it might be canceled. It's raining outside. Um, I'm also a part of um, the EPIC program, which is student-led by Ornella. Uh, I'm also in student council, and I also play the violin. I'm also in ROTC. I am a petty officer, third class. And not too long ago, mm -hmm. you guys got uniforms. Yep. That we was just, an exciting day. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just took pictures yesterday, and I got ranked up yesterday to, yesterday to a petty officer, third class. 
Well, congratulations to that. Thank you. And you see, not surprising, mm -hmm. involved, so involved yeah. with so many different things, taking advantage of everything Princeton has to offer. So that's yeah. awesome. Awesome here, Amy. Mm -hmm. Sam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a, my name is Sam Patel. I'm a senior at Princeton High School. Um, I am graduating this year, and I'll be attending the University of Cincinnati in the biomedical engineering department. Um, I'm also the first generation of my family to attend college in the United States. Um, I play tennis. I've been involved with senior class activities, um, taking in circumstances with COVID and such. Uh, I really want to make a change in this school and and help out individuals who don't have a, like can't speak out through their voice. And I want to open up bridges for them to be able to speak out and be comfortable with voicing their opinions. That's great. Dr. Phillips, what a great representation Absolutely. here. But you also have an opportunity to work with other students from across the country. You mm -hmm. want to talk about what your role is mm -hmm. in the CSL Summit? I have the opportunity to work with um, five students. Um, they're from California, from Wisconsin, from South Carolina. And um, they are going to be talking about real, their, their, their presentation is on real talk, and it's really talking to teachers about some of the things that he just shared. Yeah. Um, and so my role is district lead. Um, I represent Princeton. And in addition to that, um, I help coach them. And so we've been meeting probably for the last, wow, three months maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and they have been very devoted students, definitely leaders. Um, just like the four Princeton students that we have. Sure. They are leaders in their class, and they see the systemic racism that's going on, and they want to advocate for action. You know, they want to make some changes. Um, and so uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to be a part of that, and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to April the 24th, which is when the, um, the summit uh, begins. It's from 11 o'clock until 4 o'clock, and... Uh, we're going to have a great time. Our students are going to have a great time. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. Well, the biggest thing is to get that message out that with the social justice mm -hmm. and truly trying to understand uh, some of the things we say and we do are, could be really hurtful, and we may not even understand it. And so that deep understanding and the real talk and all that's, that's going to happen is really going to help drive change, and that's what we want, not only in Princeton but across the country. And Unfortunately, last week, which now it'll be like a week and a half once this airs, uh, but you look at everything that happened in the Asian American community and, and that we continue to see things like that over and over and over again in our country. And the time for change is so long overdue to have us really embrace each other, recognize and appreciate the differences. It's, it's the differences that make us so strong. Uh, but we still have others that really need a lot of help to, to really kind of do things different. So, Amy, uh, you've seen some things before in the past, but here you are with, on a national stage. Are you nervous a little bit? Yes, I'm nervous a little bit, just, just a little bit. It's, it's wearing off. Okay. Good. Now, uh, where are the other students from that you're working with? Um, the, my other student, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But they're from, I mean, literally from all over the country. Yeah, they're from all over the country. I don't know where yeah. specifically. Sure, sure. <laughs> and that's something that really kind of is the strength of this. It's not just Princeton. We know that there are other school districts locally that are involved too, like Middletown. And, and uh, the superintendent there, Marlon Stiles, does such a great job advocating for uh, social justice, advocating for equitable services, and so forth. So it's great to work with him. I get an opportunity to work with him quite a bit. We also have Mrs. Roddy, who's involved in this program, who has some students that she works with as well. So Princeton is so well represented. What is a big message that you want to send? What, what, what do you think? Don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Speak up. Speak for yourself. You could be speaking for others as well. Yeah, so there's been a lot that's been going on in, in our country, as I just mentioned. Yeah. Are, there some, are there some moments that kind of stand out to you where you feel like, I really have to do something? I feel like the Asian-American hate is really 
hurtful at the moment towards a race that has nothing to do with such circumstances. It's wrongful. It's it's not called for. It shouldn't be a thing in the beginning, but it is. So we need to figure that out and get it written of. Sure. And Amy, I noticed the second I said, was there a moment that you felt, and I saw you shaking, yes. So you want to talk about that? Oh, well, yes. It's just that, as like what he said, um, don't be afraid to speak out because I never spoke out for myself, and I wish I did all all of my years going to school in America, I just, I never spoke out for myself until recently I started speaking up for myself. And that's when I gained respect and people never spoke to me like how they used to speak to me before. And that's how I gained my, um, my, ooh, my courage. Sure. Just speak, just speak up for yourself. Don't say anything, like, don't let anybody talk down to you. It, that's just how it sure. is. Sure, sure. So at Princeton, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about our mission statement, empowering each student for college, career, and life success. Dr. Phillips, you want to talk about maybe how over the years you felt empowered or you've seen the students get empowered? Oh, absolutely. Um, having been here for over so many years, 30 years, <laughs> I'll say. You could say over five years, too. That would be accurate as well. Students have truly um, been empowered based upon the uh, opportunity that we have given them we have absolutely given them lots of uh, uh, ability to make choices around programs, around music, uh, uh, music uh, <coughs> activities, sports, et cetera. And so I've seen people, I've seen those students uh, um, just really blossom. You know, they come into the district a little quiet, um, and then next thing you know, junior, senior year, I mean, they're on the stage and that, and, uh, thespians. So, I, I mean, I've seen them take what we have been able to offer and use it and benefit from it and then move, move forward into the, uh, into the world. So I, I, I know that you guys are going to do that as well. So, Steve, how do you feel empowered? Um, I feel like I've been given the opportunities for success, and I've really, really taken it for I've really taken action towards them, and I've used them to my ability to be the greatest person I could possibly be. So I know you mentioned tennis. Yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Dr. Phillips is an unbelievable tennis player. I've heard. I am not. <laughs> Do you think, though, that Dr. Phillips and I could take you on? Do you think we'd be competitive with you? Yeah. OK. All right, how about that? How about that? I was expecting him to say no. <laughs> but Dr. Phillips is really good. I bet. Very good. We so we'll have to do to that. Talk. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll, ha we'll, uh, we'll try to put something together in the spring. So how do you feel empowered, Amy? I mean, obviously, you took advantage of so many different activities. Yes, I feel very empowered to the school because, like I said, I never used to say anything. I, but like, I would watch people get bullied, and I would be a bystander. And I didn't like that because I remembered as being like being bullied. I didn't like it when people stood there and watched. So I just thought to myself, I was like, I need to do something. So whenever people are sitting down getting bullied, I would say something, even if that meant the person bullying would come and bully me. As long as they're not bullying other people, I'm fine with it. I never liked bullying. I never was a bully. I don't like that. That just, if it didn't make me feel right, it just doesn't make other people feel right. Sure. So I just like making a change, even if it's something small. Like, um, like if a student needs help with something, I would sit down and I would sit there and study with the person or help them with that topic. Um, back in September, my aunt and I started this studying program, this tutoring program for uh, uh, grades kindergarten to of 12th grade and I used to stay there for seven hours and I used to study with the kindergartners all the way up to 11th grade and I used to um, I used to help them with their math and stuff and it helped them get their grades up and unfortunately we they shut down but they opened back up in February so it's a really good program. How on earth do you <laughs> have time? I mean yeah. ROTC plays the violin. 
I mean, the list goes on and on and on. How do you have t How do you balance that? Well, actually, while I was doing the program, the tutoring program, I was working three jobs and I had school. I was just going back and forth with the schedule. I was going back and forth, back and forth. My mom was like, can you do it? That's a lot of stress. And I was just like, I can do it, I can do it, I'm fine. And I did it, I pushed yeah. through and I did it, yep. Oh wow, that's amazing. Well listen, uh, I am so looking forward to April 24th. Dr. Phillips I know is, people all across the country. You know, there's a, there's a quote, you've probably heard it a hundred times, but it's from Mahatma Gandhi. who says, be the change you wish to see in the world. And that's what I'm so very proud of. You two, the other two, mm -hmm. Ashley Boyd and Ornella Siakam, the, the work that you guys are going to do is going to make a change. And this is something that will forever be known. Mm -hmm. And don't be nervous when you're in front of all these teachers <laughs> <laughs> and administrators and all that. You guys are going to do a great job. Just be really direct and be confident and show that courage that you've had to. Make sure that you, when you feel like someone's going to get, you know, going to have an ace on you, Make sure you take your time, follow through. I don't even know what I'm talking about with tennis right now. Make sure you follow through. I don't know, Dr. Phillips would know. Backhand, drop shot, okay. lob. I'm just throwing out random <laughs> terms. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, good luck with everything with ROTC. I know we got you for another year. That's great. Mm -hmm. Good luck at UC. What a great institution. Yeah. That's awesome. And obviously we have tennis. Yep. So I saw you guys practicing the other day. Mm -hmm. I was going to go out to play, but see what happened was I hurt my, my elbow or something, so I couldn't get out there. But anyway, good luck with that Thank spring you. season. We'll be right back. Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. Three, two, one. On air or online, this is media for your community. This is ICRC TV. Welcome back to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. Ornella. Back. Not very often that I could say that three for three perfect. But today's episode, this month's episode, unbelievable. Wow, that's exciting. Student voice, and you're obviously always a part of it. One of the last things we talked about was See Us All Summit. And you're involved in that, too. Talk about your involvement. Um, so I am in one of the teams that uh, talks about how we are seen or witnessed in the classroom. And um, our project is kind of like to get the students to show their experiences so, t so the teachers that are in the summit know that these are things that are happening. So. Right, so kind of real talk, like Dr. Yeah. Phillips had talked about. Yes. Yeah. Well, I always say this, and I always mean it. My favorite part of what it is that we do is the student voice piece, which you saw a lot today. Mm -hmm. But to give you some time, as we always do, so Siakam speaks. Um, so today I'll be performing a poem that I actually wrote two years ago, and it won me uh, fourth place at our um, slam competition. And it'll just be a snippet of it. <laughs> hands, hands up. Hands up, don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot. Color, color, race aside, gender aside. They told us these lies. This could be anybody pinpointed by the barrel of a loaded gun, not knowing that they could be living the last seconds of their oh-so-short-lived life, that they can start counting the final breaths once they hear the cockback of the AK-47, because once that trigger is pulled, it could be 47 bullets that ricochet up and down their soon-to-be corpse dancing while piercing bullet holes anywhere on their body. All right, so or, Ornella, powerful words, words there. And I know that you wrote it two years ago, mm -hmm. and we've seen, unfortunately, yet another episode mm -hmm. in our country dealing with hate and racism in the Asian American community. Yes. So your, your words there really kind of resonate so much, not only with me, but for the people watching mm -hmm. as we continue to face some of the violence that's out there. And so that's one of the things we hope that with the See Us All Summit, that we're going to try to help more people understand. And I know that in the first segment today, we talked about youth built change. Yes. And to me, for us as a society to grow, I mean, I'm an old dog. 
And so, I mean, within five years, 10 years or whatever, I still hope to be kicking it. I still hope I'm around. But the reality is the true power of what it is that we're doing in the future is you. Yeah. You and your friends and, and uh, Snaham and uh, Amy and Madeline and Taryn <laughs> and, you, and everybody that we've had in this, in this community, but also All across around. the country. We've got to come together. Yeah. you have any final words? Um, every single time we do have an episode, I just want to say that I am grateful for this opportunity to have my voice heard and to bring along my classmates that I know are very powerful and all do want to start, um, implement change in the community because I know we're, like, we're all going to go places and we're all going to impact the world in some way or somehow. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And you know what? There's, there's, a old, there's a book, an old movie that was out there. It's called Bridges of Madison County. And while the quote that I'm getting ready to say was certainly applied differently, but I think this is so apropos today. Mm -hmm. And it said, in a universe filled with ambiguity, which we know that we live in a universe filled with ambiguity, this type of certainty happens once. And only once, no matter how many lifetimes you live. And I'm applying that quote to what it is that's going. The very first summit, student-led, about social justice, trying to impact schools and people all around the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. That certainty is going to lead to change. So again, thank you so much for agreeing to be my co-host. <laughs> we have a couple more episodes before you. Finally graduate. Finally graduate. <laughs> and we're glad to announce that we're going to be back doing all that stuff. So thanks again for joining us. Another episode of Viking Voice, the people of Princeton. And of course, as always, Go Vikes! Go Vikes.